What is a collaborative practice agreement? As a doctor, you want to provide the best care you can. Sometimes that's difficult, to say the least. What can we really accomplish in a 15-minute office visit? But what if, by harnessing the expertise of pharmacists, we could provide more comprehensive care and improve outcomes, all while reducing the burden on the physician? We think it's possible, and it might even be possible to reduce the overall cost of care. Doctors and pharmacists have a huge opportunity to collaborate. While doctors are experts in diagnosis and treatment of medical conditions, pharmacists have an even deeper expertise and understanding of drug therapies. Since almost three quarters of all doctor visits involve starting or changing medications, we've probably historically underutilized the expertise of our pharmacy colleagues. So the Kansas State Legislature in 2015 officially codified a path for physicians and pharmacists to collaborate, called, unsurprisingly, a Collaborative Practice Agreement, or CPA for short. A CPA is a formal relationship between a physician and a pharmacist in which the doctor diagnoses a specific illness or condition, supervises care, and con continues to diagnose and treat disease exacerbations but elements of the routine care are turned over to the pharmacist who treats the pre-specified condition via an agreed-upon strategy. This process involves medication reconciliation, lab interpretation, continuity of care, and even screening for disease complications. If agreed upon in the CPA, the pharmacist may even initiate, monitor, or discontinue medications. Let's look at an example, hypertension management. Let's say the physician sees a patient with hypertension that's poorly controlled for reasons she suspects are multifactorial. The doctor can enlist the help of a pharmacist to augment the patient's care. The pharmacist then may interview the patient, assess the patient's goals, barriers, and adherence to therapy, evaluate for adverse effects of medications, assess the patient's blood pressure and pulse, review and order any necessary lab tests, and discuss pertinent social, dietary, and exercise habits that may be contributing to the lack of control. The pharmacist, in this case, could then begin seeing the patient independently and adjusting medication therapy according to a treatment protocol agreed upon by the doctor and the pharmacist. But should the patient have any pre-specified complication outlined in the CPA, in this case complications of hypertension, or if the pharmacist suspects a new diagnosis, then the pharmacist would refer the patient back to the physician for further evaluation. Health systems that have successfully incorporated pharmacist-physician collaborative practice have seen improved patient outcomes, a decreased cost of care, improved patient experience, and a decreased burden of care on physicians. This is the first in a series of videos on collaborative practice agreements. For more information in the meantime, please visit healthict.org slash healthcare dash providers. Thanks for watching.